you can't you can't commute from the south, right? Unless you you have a high speed boat and you live in Rochester, right? It just <laughs> yeah, of course, <laughs> well, it, it, it impacts the market, and you know I think for the longest time in some of these cities, you know, when they were smaller and they had less population, you could get in your car and you could drive 30, 40 minutes. But now that the congestion has just gone through the roof in a lot of these major cities, you just, you can't spend two hours in your car trying to get to work, not only for the time, but just for the frustration of it. (laughs) (laughs) So certainly not during construction uh, season. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's forcing people to, uh, uh, to reconsider the, the trade off between commuting and and living downtown and paying a higher price for uh, for housing. Right, absolutely. But I mean, you know, when I when you sort of look long term, you know, people always say in economics all markets are cyclical. And in the Toronto real estate market, it seems to have been just going up, flat, up again, maybe stopped a little, but really up, up and up. So, I guess my question to you is, I mean, yeah, I am very positive about the market, but at some point is there going to be an economic cycle where things don't go so well? Yes, of, of course there will be. I mean, we've been very, very fortunate that other than, you know, a, a tiny blip in late 2008, early 2009 in the condo market. And yeah. there was even a little bit in, in 2012 and into 2013 in the, in the new condo market. There was a bit of a slowdown there. But otherwise, it's been very, very strong for 17, 18 years. Right? Yeah. So it's, it's really an unprecedented appreciation in the marketplace. But when we have a major recession, we will have another major recession and, and it will be something that's unexpected, something that, you know, uh, I've seen Calgary really didn't expect oil prices to go down 70%. We certainly right. didn't expect oil prices to go down 70% and that to impact the market. Luckily in Toronto, we're, we're a little more diversified in terms of our employment base. We're not a, you know, a commodities driven market where that's a, a one sector of the economy is influencing the the employment, so we're we're a little more isolated that way. But the recession will hit, and and prices will go down, and and really it's going to be anyone's guess how much they go down and and how difficult they it is for people. I mean, right. obviously the faster they go up, the faster they come down, right? So that right. If, if 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 Vancouver prices are going up thirty percent a year, well, they're much more likely to go down thirty percent a year than Toronto. That's you know, going up 12% a year, right? right? They're, they're, the like, likelihood that they would go down 30% is, is much is much less, right? So it's certainly something, you know, I, I get nervous when, when prices start to get into to double-digit annual increases, but I look at it across the board, right? I don't just look at the overall market. I look at what are single detached doing, what are mm-hmm. semi doing, what are towns doing, what the condo market is doing, and, and uh, we try to guess it, uh, try to, to make an assessment uh, that way, right? So, sure. So then when do you, I mean, do you even think or predict when you think that there might be more of an economic downturn in the market? Do you think that's five years away? Do you think that's two or three years away? <laughs> I wish I wish I had a crystal ball. <laughs> right, you don't? Ball. I, could, I could tell you. That, I mean, the world is so, we are we're living in such a, a globalized uh, nation now. It's so, so interconnected to all the financial markets that something's going to happen. There's always... There's always some greed. There's always something that, that, that throws the market for a loop. And I wish I knew when it was coming or where it was coming from, but I can't, right? So, I mean, certainly my advice always to anyone that's either buying for their primary residence or buying for investment is, is buy for the long term. You know, right. never go into a, into a real estate purchase thinking I'm going to, I'm going to sell this in a, in a year or I'm going to, I'm going to, I want to flip this in, in two years because you never know what the market's going to be like in two years and you never want to be in a situation where you're Forced to sell. That is mm-hmm. the that's the the worst situation that you want to be in. All right, and that's how people lose lose money when they lose their job and they they can't afford their house. Then that's when they uh, that's when they lose money. I mean, obviously you can't control when you're gonna you're gonna lose your house, but you know, buy below your means. I mean, I've. I mean, I, I, I preach that people say, oh, you're a developer. You want everyone to buy. Well, I don't, you know, I don't want everyone to buy. I don't want to be a, a situation where, where more bridges are underwater and, and things are really bad for an extended period of time. Right. So yeah, uh, I want people to, I mean, we, we have lots of investors. We have lots of investment units for people to rent in, right. If that works better for their lifestyle, mm-hmm. and that, uh, that's only, it's only better for uh, the real estate investors that, that we have in our kind of, uh, the fortress family, right? So, right. Uh, I mean, I want people to, to buy what, uh, what they can afford. And, and yes, it's frustrating that prices go up. I'm in the same situation. My wife wants a bigger house. She wants a, <laughs> she wants a, a backyard and a, and a two 
our garage and you know all that fun stuff. But you know, I, I refuse to live beyond my means and if the situation presents itself where we can afford that type of home in the future then, then maybe we'll move and maybe we won't right so right, right. Yeah, and certainly I, I certainly i give the same advice to anyone else that's uh, that's in the marketplace yeah absolutely and then so you know when you read the newspapers over the time over the last few years lots of doom and gloom every year whether mm-hmm. it's the globe or mclean's or it just it seems like almost every canadian publication is printing the same article about the doom and gloom in the market the crash the crash it's coming it's coming now every single year they get it wrong i think i've probably spent <laughs> the same article for the last 10 years every single year and i'm always yeah. amazed that they never actually go back and go hey wait a minute we got it wrong Let's go back and think about what did we get wrong? What What's going on? What are your thoughts about that? Yeah, I mean, the newspapers, I mean, what's their, their mandate? Their mandate is to, to present the news, but their mandate is to get the people to read, you know, get the people to, to buy their newspaper or go to their, their, their site, right? And as sad as it is, bad news sells better than good news. It's just mm-hmm. a, it's a reality, right? When you turn on the, the evening news, well, what do they talk about? But the crash here, the person that got poisoned there, the, you know, someone got killed over here, right? It's <laughs> yeah. unfortunate, but very rarely is the lead boy saves puppy from tree, right? You know, it's just uh, market stable, right? You know, yeah. they, 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 don't, they don't talk about companies that just hired 2,000 people, right? They talk about a company that laid off 2,000 people. That's just, it's the reality of it. People click on those articles much more frequently than they do positive articles and right. it's it's unfortunate but that's the nature of it and people always want to give people that uh, you know the the possibility of, of something uh, going poorly right? right unfortunately a lot of the a lot of the analysis that's being done is you know not particularly good analysis or, or weak yeah. arguments weak statistical arguments right and and, and and very rarely do people understand other markets that are similar to ours and what's happening in in those markets why those markets went up or down, right? Mm-hmm. It really it really takes a little bit more. You know, I've been doing this for real estate analysis for over 15 years, and it's and I'm I'm still studying all these markets and trying to understand, you know, why one went up and why went one went down, and what what trends are influencing each marketplace. It's so much different between between each market that, that can change the data that comes out of those uh, markets, right? So it really really takes a kind of a, a level of expertise to to understand it. But right. again, putting an upside down house on fire on the cover of your magazine is, is going to sell <laughs> some magazines, right? So yeah. uh, when Ian, when I bet you that the author of that, that article really really doesn't believe believe some of the things that he's writing anyway. <laughs> You're right. That makes sense. Now, I think you touched on it earlier. You were saying your wife wants a bigger place. So do you own or rent a – and you are you in a house or a condo? We live in a condo townhome. Oh, so okay. For me, it's kind of the – for me, it's kind of the best of both worlds, right? I don't, I don't want to climb on roofs and get leaves out of gutters, or yep. or wash windows, or or cut grass, or do gardening, right? So my house is nicely well maintained, as long as, uh, along with all the other townhomes on my block. I mean, I have no no backyard to worry about, so yep. so I don't have to maintain that. But we live right beside a park, so I take the kids over there. There's a little kids area, so that's where I take the kids. A place for the dog to. Uh, to run around close by. Uh, so for me, it's kind of the best of both worlds. I'm in the city of Toronto. I'm in the, the upper beaches area. So I've got oh, a streetcar there. I've got, I've got a go train, train stop, the last go train before Union Station. So it takes me 12 minutes to, uh, uh-huh. to get from there down to, down to Union. The subway close by, I can walk to it in, in five minutes. But I still can drive to a grocery store and park. I can drive to big box. So for me, it's kind of the, the, the combination of everything, right? It's a condominium. So I don't have to worry about it the maintenance but it's still low rise like yeah. i don't have to park four floors underground uh, condominium and <laughs> walk my walk my way up or wait for elevators right yeah so, so for me it's kind of the, the best of both worlds it almost feels like the suburbs but it's in the city and it's still condominiumized so i don't have to deal with all that other bs but i i, I still have the kind of the comforts of a of a, a low rise home so mm-hmm. so for me i i really like where where we live I bought it new in 2009, so I had it under warranty. It's got ah, okay. ceilings that are ceilings that are high enough for a uh, um, you know six foot six guy. So <laughs> everything's seems good. I'm, I have zero skills in being handy, so that's why I prefer to buy new. But I have to 
fix anything. <laughs> <laughs> that makes sense. I think it's always about recognizing where your talents and strengths and weaknesses are and, and buying accordingly. That makes the most sense to me. Yes, exactly. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for joining us today, Ben. Ben, if people have questions, if they want to get your manuscript, how should they re- reach out to you? Yeah, so, I mean, the the, the two best ways, you know, to www.fortressrealdevelopments.com is, is uh, the company site. Uh, my uh, Twitter is Ben Myers 29 so that's a that's a good good way to to reach out to me. I I, I tweet a, my, my articles I do in the Sun and the uh, and the New Condo Guide and the rest of my writing. Uh, Ren X Magazine, Huffington Post, so a bunch of the stuff my writings I, I link onto my own um, Twitter page. I have conversations about the, about the housing market on a, on a fairly regular basis. So a lot of the information there that can be, uh, you know, can be uh, found on, on my Twitter page and at, at fortressrealdevelopments.com. Perfect. Great. Well, thanks so much for joining us today, Ben. That was Ben Myers, Perfect. Senior Vice President of Market Research Analytics at Fortress Real Developments. Thanks, everybody, for listening. And uh, you can find me at devel at bosleyrealestate.com or at Twitter at Devel Morrison, or on Instagram at Devel Morrison. Thanks, everyone, for listening. Bye for now. You've been listening to The Morrison Report. Hosted by Devel Morrison, sales representative for Bosley Real Estate Limited Brokerage. Real estate investor and best-selling author, bringing you insights on the Toronto real estate market. Join us for another podcast.